everybody welcome back to my channel so uh, now we're gonna tell you what's going on what this is why we got it and what we hope to do with it so this is a 1967 Ford tow truck we believe that this came from the factory with the intention of being a tow truck because it has a PTO on the transmission that actually runs the uh, mechanics of the towing unit, which I'll get to that in a bit. This truck, from what I am, have been told and what I understand, is called a bump body Ford. And supposedly, now I've got two differing opinions on this. I had somebody try to tell me that has nothing to do with it, but I was told the reason why these are called bump bodies is because of this bump out area right here that runs the length of the, the truck and the cab and if it had a regular bed on it it would go down the side of the bed so this supposedly is why this is a bump body which is what makes this truck a little bit different than some of the later years so I don't remember exactly so here's the bump that we're talking about okay and then I don't remember exactly what it is but something about the way this emblem looks uh, makes this also a 67 um, so there are certain things you look for to tell us that that's a 67 so when we first saw this truck it was buried in a cow barn covered with a bunch of garbage and you can see all the years of manure that are stuck in the wheels we initially thought maybe that was a uh, like mocked up aftermarket front end somebody put on it. We, we now know that no, that's the factory uh, front end that they put on the tow trucks. We've seen pl plenty of photographic evidence of that. By the way, this particular year and model of truck was used as one of the tow trucks in the Dukes of Hazard show back in the 1980s which was really popular. It was one of my favorite shows when I was growing up as a kid. And uh, we love them Duke boys. Anyways, a lot of people are gonna say, no, 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 they used a the Chevy or they used this or they used that. I'm telling you right now, you are, an, an, unless you are a super nerd fan of the Dukes of Hazard, you would not realize that there's a website where people actually had a long discussion about Cooter's trucks. And this particular model truck was used very early in the series, and it wasn't Cooter's Garage at the time. It was something called like Hazard County Towing or something like that. And then in later years, you're absolutely right, they went to other models, they went to other makes, but I think there's even a video on YouTube, there's a, a video of uh, a scene where Cooter is saving the General Lee from rolling off. It roll, it's rolling down the hill perfectly straight for some inexplicable reason, heading towards a big giant drop-off cliff, which, of course, you know, they have lots of those, right? Just hanging around down south. Anyways, Cooter gets the tow truck in front of it and applies the brakes just in time to slow the General Lee down and save the day. Fortunately, old Cooter was heading that way on a call. Hang on, General, I'm a coming. Now that's true love between one good old boy and one good old car. So I really had to kind of mess with this clip so I could avoid any copyright infringement issues <laughs> pretty sure this is the truck in that video is, it? is that what you figured out yeah all right that's like that, that, that no no same not year. not this truck <laughs> yeah same model same year all right so let me show you another funny thing about this truck that kind of perplexed us so when we first saw this truck sitting in the barn and we got some pictures of what we could see of the truck and we went home and we're trying to figure out what the heck this thing was, one of the things we focused in on was this hood ornament. We're like, well, that should tell the story, right? Wrong. This silly little hood ornament caused us all kinds of problems because 
every single 1960s Ford pickup truck and tow truck that we looked at online. We could not find any of them that had this hood ornament. Matter of fact, most of them don't even have any hood ornament up there. So that was kind of weird. Then things get a little bit more interesting. The day we went to go pick the truck up, I got in the cab and it was the first time I actually sat behind the steering wheel. And I noticed that this three-spoke steering wheel with the three-spoke horn thing, which apparently is normal for a 67 Ford truck, the center cap right here actually says Fairlane 500. So this center cap is used on a Ford Fairlane 500. So uh, my first thought was they've got a Ford Fairlane 500 steering wheel they stuck on here. But then when I looked at the steering wheel that belongs in here, I realized, oh, I think it's the same steering wheel. So I think Ford used the same steering wheel and three button horn thing for both the Ford Fairlane and the five, Ford Fairlane 500 and the uh, Ford pickup trucks. And I think they just changed the center cap. There's something funky with the column here because there's a big space right here. So something's missing, either that or maybe this isn't the correct steering wheel after all. We're not sure yet. I'm not going to worry about that right now. It does its job. It turns. But getting back to that emblem. So since it had this Ford Fairlane steering wheel in it, or the cap anyways, I decided just for the heck of it to look around at some pictures of some Ford Fairlanes. And I found a picture of a Ford Fairlane Skyliner, which is a, a, a rare convertible. Whoa, the camera almost blew over. So the Ford Fairlane Skyliner is a pretty rare convertible that had an automatic, uh, the, the tr back trunk would open up and the whole thing would fold down into it. It's pretty cool. But I noticed in that video that on the front fenders of that car, there were hood ornaments that looked very much like this one. And it occurred to me, somebody took a hood ornament off of a Ford Fairlane, stuck it on, a fender ornament off a of Ford Fairlane and stuck it on here as a hood ornament. That's one possibility. The other thing I found out though, recently in talking to a guy who works on old cars a lot, he told me that it's quite possible that this was bought and installed at the dealership by whoever bought the truck. That it wasn't uncommon for them to add on accessories and little things to dress things up at the dealership. So it could be that this was on here since the truck was new. We don't know. So we looked at the frame under this truck and it didn't seem to be too bad. Um, so the next thing that gave us a real, you know, pause was this huge rotted out area here. It's, it's really bad. So, you know, uh, this was kind of like a, uh oh, do we even want to get involved with having to try and patch this? It looked pretty nasty, but then, as we were discussing purchasing this truck, the gentleman who owned it pointed out to us that further in the back of the cattle barn, cow barn, he had this, an extra cab. And we noticed that in the rear there, it's got the little bump on it. So this appears to be a bump body cab. This cab this cab is in excellent condition, except for the brackets on the bottom that are responsible for mounting it to the frame, the mounting brackets, but those are available aftermarket, so we should be able to replace those. And I actually was surprised how bad those were rotted, considering that this cab is in such great shape, but the theory is it was sitting on the ground in that, uh, in a bunch of cow manure and mud for so many years, I think that actually rotted after it was placed there. And as you can see, it's nice and solid. There's even a stock number on here, 0172. Probably this was at a junkyard, a boneyard somewhere, and the guy had had it in his inventory. Uh, there is a nice sticker right over there, which is going to tell us exactly what this came out of. So there's the sticker right there. All right, so it's a 1972 uh, cab. And we have been told that that will... Uh, be an exact replacement for the uh, the cab that's all rotted out on our current project. Well, as long as we're back here, let's take a look at the tow body, wrecker body. the wrecker body. 
pretty easy to identify. Got a big placard right there. It's a Holmes 440. I don't know anything about record bodies, but a quick Google search told me that apparently these were made, but they made a ton of these and they made them for quite a few years. So it'll do some digging for us to find out what year this body is. Um, I don't even know if they made, I think they made the 400 first maybe and then the 440 came later. I'm not sure, but I'm wondering whether or not, uh, I'm wondering whether or not this is the original body that was on the truck when it was purchased. You know, we still don't know the history of the build and all that stuff. Probably be able to find a VIN number on this thing and maybe get a little bit more information. I don't know. So there's the uh, winch unit, the cable winch unit that's driven off the PTO on the transmission. Apparently they made those at the factory that they made the tow body because it says right on it, Ernest Holmes Company, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Right here, there's a tag that has the model and serial number information. And Mark was just reading that for me. Mark, what's that say? Okay, serial number A6. 7CF-1222. So what's those first two numbers you see? 67. What does that sound like to you? 67. And what year is this truck? 67. So what do you think that means? It's a... I would, I would venture to guess that, that, that this is original to the truck. That the truck was born a tow truck. Which is cool. In fact, this is a 67 body. Tow body would uh, help explain some of this kind of stuff here, like, uh, well, how this has got some like major rot, and this is probably actually already been redone once because. I'll show you the other side. I don't know how we're gonna do that. Mark has just informed me that this was rated for 8,000 pounds towing capacity. For lifting or towing? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Who yeah. cares? Yeah. Is that for the 440 or the 400? That still says on the tag. Oh, it does? Oh, okay. I should have been paying attention. Okay, so on this side, we got some serious rod out on the tow body, but get a load of this. This is what I thought was cool. This is a new piece that they had put in. They tack welded this piece in, and then they used a little bit of Bondo. <laughs> So, I don't know if you can see how thick that is, but they really were generous with the Bondo on this sucker. That's a big old chunk of Bondo. Mark's going to try and use a little less body filler when we're working on this. My plan is to get the fabrication part actually almost perfect. Really? All right. We had one casualty on the drive back. If you watch the video, you probably noticed, those of you who were more keen observers, noticed that there was an orange lens on top of that light. Not anymore. <laughs> and when we got home, it was gone. So that literally blew off on the drive home somewhere and will probably never be seen again. I'm sure it shattered into a million pieces when it hit the ground. Yeah. So that's one casualty. There is pretty much no longer a floor in this whole section of the cab. Passenger side actually I think it looks okay. But that actually looks like I see some sheet metal that's riveted in place over there. So I think that was a, some kind of a hack deal. Uh, the dashboard has one big crack in the middle on this vinyl cover or whatever you call it. Otherwise, it's actually not that horrible. Even the bench seat. I mean, the vinyl on the bench seat's actually not that bad. We don't know what may or may not have burrowed into the, you know, backside of the seat and is living in it currently, but, you know, not terrible. All right, so the gas cap is locked. Are these the keys that he gave us with the... Yeah, I wonder if this is the key for the gas cap. It is. Bad gasket, but it's a cool cap. It's not as rusted as I thought it would be. I smell gas in there. Smell it. And it doesn't. Oh, doesn't smell that bad. 
I've smelt worse. Yeah, smell worse than my own tractor. <laughs> also, that gets us back to the other uh, the other point we wanted to bring up here. We are in the state of Massachusetts. So here is a DPW, DPU common uh, carrier uh, permit. And it's got the date left on it, 1980. This is where the inspection sticker would have been. Uh, there's a ghost here where it was stuck to the windshield and when it fell off, it left behind. I can clearly see it says fall of 1981. So this truck was last registered and on the road back in 1981. You're still in high school. I was a freshman, freshman in, in high, high school, school when this truck was last on the road. <laughs> So like Mark just said, considering how long this has been sitting, it's actually in a pretty good shape. And that's because of the fact it's been in a barn. The barn was unheated and had big open doors on one side that, you know, snow and whatever could blow in there, but it was far enough in so it was kind of protected. Now it's going to be open for a winter. The uh, hood latches, I believe, are rotted off. <laughs> My side's completely off. Well, we had this. Didn't we? Yeah. Here we hold. Push. Okay, you're bending the metal. You're bending the hood. Is it the. What's going on? There we go. There we go. Okay. Hey. What? That's just unbolted. No, it's rotted. No, but somebody unbolted that from there. Yeah. So what we were just talking about is that the, the reason why this whole side of the hood uh, hinge isn't working is because this is all rotted out. But what's funny is somebody unbolted this from there. Because this looks fine. This could be bolted back right back up again, but there's no point in doing it because of... That side still looks good. Yeah. That's weird how this is so rotted, huh? That looks like a low and brow. That's an old beer. Back in the day, they had bottles like this. I bet you that's what that was. Keep that. I want to keep it. Nah. I'm washing it out. So a couple of the good things we like about this truck that, you know, appealed to me was the fact that, for one thing, it's a manual transmission, which will be fun to drive if we get it running. And uh, second of all, it's uh, it's got a big honking V8 in here. V8 so I think it would be kind of a cool truck to go cruising in, you know? Anyways. Gas guzzler. Uh, what? Gas guzzler. So the bad news is I'm just noticing for the first time that the I believe the breather went right here on top of this valve cover. It's gone. I could see acorns in there, which means mice have already been going in this hole and setting up shop. Good thing this hasn't been exposed to the elements because that would really be bad if water and everything was getting down in there. Pretty straightforward system here. I mean, I, I feel perfectly comfortable working on this truck. Uh, we got a regular uh, distributor here. We got a, we got a big honking carburetor on there. The air cleaner cover is in the uh, cab of the truck, in case you didn't see it. We don't know if this is the original motor. We have no reason to believe that it isn't. And until we find something to, to identify that fact, we're just gonna go on the assumption that this is the original motor. Looks like, from the looks of this oil filter, it may be overdue for some maintenance, but then again, 1981, from what we figured, right? Uh, the mechanical fuel pump, and I've never seen this style. Well, you know, that just goes to show you I'm not a car guy. I've never seen this style where it looks like this is a, a filter right on the bottom of the pump. It's kind of neat. There's a plastic bag over here. Mark asked what that was. So uh, a week and a half ago, I would not have been able to tell Mark what that plastic bag was, but as luck would have it, I was at that guy's house who was working on his old cars and he had a uh, Ford Thunderbird there and it was all restored and it was, you know, the Hood was open and I saw a brand new one of those because they reproduced those. That's the washer fluid reservoir on these old trucks and cars. Uh, this is actually the pump right here for the washer, window washer. 
I stepped on the brakes and they feel like they're locked up solid. So I think maybe the master cylinder is cooked. Who knows? I mean, I guess we could just pop this open easy enough to see if there's any fluid in there. I know one of the, I know one of the steel lines on the back literally just like busted apart easily when we, oh yeah, that's bone dry. The good news is it's not completely rusted inside there. It's just bone dry. Which means all the fluid went out of a busted line somewhere, or two, or three lines somewhere. Just try to bring the tractor over until I jump this. You can't jump it directly off the lead lines. Yeah, you need to put the battery in here and then jump it. We should try it. That's another video. That's a will it start. I gotta get some of that musty money. <laughs> Okay, so this is one of the things we were pretty happy to see. And this, the owner of the truck showed us this when we were there that day. Oddly enough, these belts actually won't slip so much that we can't actually use the fan. And turn the motor over. Can it make one full revolution? We don't know that yet. It does not prove that the motor isn't junk. It just proves that the motor isn't seized. Baby steps. Can you push it down so it latches? Yeah. There you go. Don't scratch the paint. Yeah, I know. It's totally restored. All right, I'm way behind on editing, but I'm going to uh, jump this video up in the queue, so... Uh, because I want to get this out there sooner than later because I'm interested to hear what you guys who uh, follow my channel, what you think about this. Um, so one of the big questions you probably have is, what well, would you pay for this rusty old piece of whatever? So we paid 800 bucks cash for this truck. And that included the extra cab in the back. So I really don't know valuations on these things, but I just thought it was cool enough that maybe it'd be worth putting some money into and getting it back on the road and you know I don't know so is it worth 800 bucks you guys tell me would you pay 800 for this thing with all the rot that it's got and non running and just you know rats nest in the back and being that it's a tow truck and not a step side pickup truck or something like that which I don't know I kind of think maybe it's cooler that it's a tow truck hard to say that's not to say we couldn't take the tow truck body off of this thing and put a flatbed on it if we wanted to, you know. Be a dually in the rear, which would be kind of cool. Um, but it's probably going to be a while. I'm warning you now. It's probably going to be a while before we get to do anything with this. It's November 20th. It's already cold today. And it won't be long before this will all be covered in snow. So the plan is we're going to try and get some of the stuff, like the, the cab that's in really good condition, we're going to try and get that stored inside over the winter so that it doesn't, you know, continue to deteriorate and be like a complete piece of garbage when we go to use it when we get around to that stage. Uh, maybe we'll try and do a will it run, a quick see if we can just get the thing to start type of deal. Maybe we can get that done before Christmas. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, I wouldn't count on it. We got so many other things going on here. So I'm gonna call this video a wrap right here. My uh, associate director over here, he's giving me the cut sign. He's saying it's way too long. Get the hell out. No. Drive what? Nothing. Oh. <laughs> All right. So once again, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please hit the like button. If you're not already a subscriber, please consider subscribing, especially if you want to eventually see some more stuff happening on this old truck. Which, oh, by the way, I'm not ripping off that. I know who you're talking about there. This old truck is a whole other thing. Great channel, by the way. But uh, anyway, take it easy. Man.